so after the patch there are a couple things that have changed and i'm going to give you every big mistake you shouldn't be making and all the quick easy tips that are going to help you in diablo 4. today's sponsor is all sun remote the remote functionality lets you connect to your home pc and play games work do whatever you need to do from any mobile device such as an ipad iphone laptop or another computer you can even access your home pc from your phone all you have to do is download the all sun remote software on your pc once you've synced your device you can download the app on your iphone click your sync desktop and log into it there are a few different tiers one of which is the game tier which includes a customizable gaming keyboard meaning you can actually go in and select from presets or create your own keyboard on your mobile device so you can simply click the top edit button click the keyboard and adjust and set up every mouse click or every potential key that you could need for playing one of your games like diablo and organizing them like you can see i did with all my skill buttons this is honestly one of the coolest things because at any time i can remote home with my phone and run a couple nightmare dungeons and even do some durial runs they even have a smart plug you can plug your pc straight into to actually wake it up remotely you have indefinite control basically to turn on and log onto your pc whenever you feel like it when not at home also when you click on the link in the description use the code shown on screen and the first 200 people are going to get completely free access and if you're interested upgrade to premium and get a bunch of the other cool features that they offer the very first thing is choosing your correct pit tier. Now with the new setup, you're currently going to be getting Stygian stones at these rates for the different pit levels. Now, obviously if Stygian stones are important to you, then you should be running over tier 100 or at least tier 100 to get a 18% chance of dropping them. So you can run more durial runs, but you want to make sure you're running pit tier 101. Why? Because you get the most mats from doing this without the least amount of drop off. For instance, I can speed run and do these and get 60 neath iron per run doing tier 101. Once you start going to tier 110, 120, they're not only much harder, but you get less resources for the payoff. For example, a pit tier 110 gives you like 64 or 65. And each time you go up 10 pit levels from that, let's say 120 or 130, you're really only getting like four or five extra materials from doing that. And it's much harder. So it's absolutely not worth it to do that. You should be running tier 101, get your max 60 resources, unless you're trying to push for a higher pit tier just for the heck of it. Otherwise running tier 101 is the perfect, most efficient way to get the most amount of mats, which we desperately need at this point. And again, if you're struggling running pit tier 101, run tier 91 or something that's most efficient within the three or four minute range to give you your most amount of resources. Again, another big thing here is if you're using materials or gathering materials, especially if you're speed running, make sure please, for the love of everything that's holy, you're using the crafting materials at the alchemist. Because if I can get 60 neath iron in two or three minutes, Let's say I can get 60 in three minutes. I can then come turn those 60 into 180 ingolith and then turn those 180 ingolith into 540 obdicite. So one run gets you 540 obdicite if you look at it that way. So make sure you're running the higher pits if they're still efficient for you versus running the lower level pits to get the lower level materials. I've already said that in a lot of guides, but some people are still doing that. So please, if you're looking to be efficient, please do that. Now, another mistake I even made on a bunch of my characters early on, especially even after the patch, what was a big power mistake on why you're character isn't doing as much damage as many other characters that you've seen built whether you follow the build guide or whatever the case and a big reason for that is your paragon board selection order and your actual glyph ranks so to give you an example via the patch they recently reduced the amount that some of the later boards take to actually receive the later benefits. Just to give you an example, this is like our sixth board we've taken. It takes 460 dexterity to get the bonus for this rare node. Now, previously this would have been like 720 dexterity, but they reduced it down to be much less. So with that being said, you still need to pay attention to which nodes you're taking because certain builds won't get that many extra stats like this. So if you're running this board and you really need this particular node bonus, you need to make sure you're qualified for it so that means if you have to rework your paragon boards to take this board away and put it let's say over here in the second slot the second slot currently only needs 290 willpower to get this bonus so you're going to need a lot less stats to get the bonus if it's a lot further in the order that you place the board. So board one takes less resources, 160 dexterity. The second board takes a little more, 230 willpower. The next, a little bit more, 290 willpower. And again, the same thing goes up to 360 dexterity all the way as we continue. So if you're not getting the bonuses on the big boards you need, you need to make sure you put those boards first and the later boards last. Just like for instance, a node like this that we need, 850 strength. I'm currently running a barbarian. So we have 1600 strength. 
If this is the case, I should be putting this board last because we're always going to meet that requirement because that is our main stat. So pay attention to your Paragon board selection. Another important thing is paying attention to your Paragon level. It might not be affecting your build as much as you think, but it is, I promise you, it's driving your build into the ground and making it hit like a turtle going full speed. I mean, it's really bad. And the reason I say this is because, because once you hit node level 15, you're actually maxing out the range of the node itself, allowing you to meet the requirements and bump up the actual ability of the glyph itself. But that's not the biggest thing. But if you have any nodes on 15, that means you're leaving a ton of actual damage and stuff on the table. You need to make sure every one of your glyphs is maxed out at level 21 because essentially there's a 25% difference in power across your entire build from your Paragon nodes when doing this. Because for this exploit glyph, if we look at this plus 7.9% increased damage to vulnerable targets, if this glyph was only level 15, we would only maybe be getting like plus 5.9%, meaning we would be missing out on a lot of vulnerable damage. And again, the dust level damage up here, we have 475% at 39.6% is what we get for every five strength. We would normally, if this was only level 15, we would only be getting probably like 27% increased damage, meaning we would drop down to like only 300 and something increased percent. It's a huge damage and power downgrade if you're not at level 21 on all your glyphs versus level 15 and they're super easy now to level up because they're one of the biggest if not one of the most important things to make your build actually really good next is the big angel breath problem because right now even though gold is still really important a lot of people like me and everybody else are running out of the main resource you need which is angel breath and that's because you have to enchant this gear so many times to get it exactly how you want it i mean sometimes you have to enchant this thing not one time but 20 times or 50 times to get the perfect stat on there that you want, sometimes not even the perfect stat, sometimes just the stat you want. So we need a lot of angel breath and there's two specific ways to get this very easily. Now there's one way to get this very easily, that's the quickest way to farm. Ideally, you want to do events in the Helltide and you wanna consistently transition from event to event. Why? Because most every one of these chests is gonna give you 10 angel breath every time you complete one of the events. And generally there are four events, as you can see here, right in a row, and you can just go to all four of them very quickly in essentially like a loop. Now, each time you do one of these, you can essentially get like 40 angel breath, if not a little bit more from extra activities, but you want to farm these events and even the smaller fire or blood event because it can give you a lot of angel breath. You currently only get like four or five or so from beating the blood maiden. So the blood maiden is dead when it comes to angel breath. It's not worth it to do these events, get you the most. You can actually get three to 400 angel breath an hour by doing this method. And the way to do this efficiently is to pull up helltides.com and actually look at where the events are. So you can see in this hell tide in Fracture Peaks, we can start up here, go one, two, three, four, get 40 angel breath, then come all the way back up here and see if it's restarted. If you get up here and it's not restarted, what I'd recommend doing really quick is simply just hitting escape or leaving the game back to the main menu, selecting your character to come back in. Most of the time you get put in a new instance and the events at that point could have probably respawned because a lot of people don't run these that consistently and then do all four of them all over again and continue to do this. And you could probably do the full rotation, probably like seven times times in an hour at 40 angel breath per pop meaning we can easily get 280 to 300 just from the events itself within an hour cell time next are some big enchanting mistakes but i have a big enchanting tip that you may or may not have heard yet that is actually pretty helpful so if i grab a random piece of gear here and i actually go to enchant this item now let's say i click on this to enchant it again like i mentioned in previous videos you have this view possible affixes icon up here that shows you the possible affixes you can get on this gear and you need to make sure you're checking this to make sure when you're trying to enchant a piece of gear that what you're actually trying to get you can get if you see if i click down here the enchanting affixes are a little bit different so you want to make sure you're checking this before you enchant to make sure and say hey i actually can get what i'm trying to get on this piece of gear because sometimes with the pieces the way they're set up you might not be able to get what you're trying to get and you're gonna waste hundreds of millions of gold trying to do this thing and hundreds of millions of angel breath and waste all your time in angel breath which is going to make you angry. So I highly recommend doing that, but there's another key trick to actually doing this enchanting. Let's say there are things over here that are much more uncommon to get, such as the up to 5% chance to restore primary resource. Let's say that's what I was trying to get. Let's say we enchanted this piece. We didn't get it. That sucks, right? So we're going to keep on trying and trying and trying. Now hear me out here is to actually re-enchant this piece of gear to a different affix to better get the affix that you want. And maybe that makes sense. Maybe it doesn't. But to give you an example, maximum life is one of those affixes that has a much higher percent chance to roll. So in most cases, you want to try and get a piece that's missing this. So that way you can roll it very easily. But on the flip side, if you're trying to get another rare affix like this, and you enchant this life on hit, we'll probably get max life. And I'll show you just randomly here. I guarantee you we get it as an option. And look, we got it as an option. So you shouldn't do no change and keep re-rolling this over and over and over. 
because the life on hit affix that we currently have is actually more rare than maximum life, which means we shouldn't get it as much. And you want to get the rare affixes down here so you have a better percent chance to get the affix you want. You don't want to keep seeing maximum life on your screen at this point because you do not want it, right? So we're actually going to re-enchant this as maximum life. And by doing this, we're no longer going to see this affix, which otherwise we would see every single time we went to enchant greatly increasing the odds that we'll get the affix that we actually do want instead of again maximum life and it's ruining our chances of enchanting properly i don't know i've seen too many people talk about that tip but that's a big one i've been using because it ups your odds to get what you want much quicker now if we go to enchant i no cuts no cuts and we get the exact affix we want i'm telling you if you're not doing this, you need to start doing it. A lot of people don't do this because honestly, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about doing this, but if you do it, you'll make enchanting hopefully a little bit easier, if not much easier on yourself and save you a lot of time, a lot of gold and a lot of resources. Now, again, these are other big tips that you're going to want to pay attention to. So if you get a piece of gear like this, so we'll take this ax for instance, it's been tempered twice already, right? We'll go ahead and masterwork this piece. So let's say we throw it in here. Let's say we have 92% damage with two handed bludgeoning weapons. Okay, we as, as a tempered affix. So we go ahead and upgrade this to level one. That goes to 96.6%. Now, what we're gonna do is actually go to temper this thing again. Let's say it's one of these cases where we got really good temper rolls. And so we still have a lot of temper chances left, but we've already masterworked it. But let's say we wanna retemper this to something else. And we actually can do that. And when you retemper this item, it's actually gonna maintain the same master working bonus from this previous item. So again, you can see that death blow damage here isn't 200% or the same level that it was. It's actually the masterwork ranked one version of that tempered affix, meaning you can re-temper affixes on these items and they actually maintain the same masterworking bonus that the item is. So if you've masterworked an item and you don't wanna re-temper it because you're worried that your stat's gonna go down or whatever, it doesn't, it maintains the same stat bonus that's currently in that slot. To give you another example, let's say we masterwork this ax all the way to rank four. To give you an example, we masterworked this thing to get 273% death blow damage from our big 25% bonus for masterworking this thing to rank four. Now that slot right there means that that slot specifically is the masterworked bonus slot. So don't worry about, again, losing your stats. If you go in here to actually temper this item again, let's say we re-temper the death blow aspect to, I don't know, something on here. Once we retemper it, you can see, even though it's a brand new temper, it still has that plus 25% bonus because that plus 25% bonus applies to that slot specifically. Meaning you can retemper pieces if, if you have the temper options left. And if you get lucky enough to get what you want, they're gonna maintain that big bonus as well as all of the previous mass working upgraded bonuses in case you do feel like you want or need to retemper a really good piece of gear this way. Now, another thing with master working is you can see these gloves as an example. We have critical strike damage on the gloves as a regular affix, and we have critical strike damage as a tempered affix. Now, ultimately the way these upgrades work is master working always goes off the base affix value. So let's say the base affix value of the original affix for this was 50% critical strike chance. Let's say the original affix for the tempered version is 75% critical strike chance. The original base value of the affix is what determines what upgrades the most. So whichever affix has the biggest base value is the one you want to make sure if you're trying to hit masterworking on it, you hit masterworking on that piece. That's why I'm lucky I got critical strike damage masterworked on the tempered affix versus the original one because the base value is much higher, meaning it upgrades at a much higher rate. Again, just to show you an example, to pull out the perfectly mathematical calculator, to show you the 75% for the tempered, tempered affix, if we upgrade that by 25%, we go to 93.7%. That's an increase of 18.75%. If we upgrade the basic affix, obviously times that 25%, and to subtract 50, we only went up 12.5% instead of 18. That's a pretty big difference. Now, the big difference really comes in, let's say these gloves were a tempered affix for the original affix of critical strike damage. Let's say they're showing a 75% as well, the exact same stat. Again, the master working value only goes off of the original base value. The greater affix value doesn't matter. The greater affix value doesn't count for master working. It's only the original, in this case, what would have been 50% critical strike chance. Even if this critical strike damage was GA'd at 75%, it only takes that base value yet again. So most of the time, damage affixes, especially for master working from tempered compared to regular damage affixes, the tempered version, more than likely in most cases, is going to be the one you kind of want to focus on upgrading the most because the tempered value 
typically in a lot of cases has the biggest base value. Also, again, I've stated this in a previous video, make sure if you're looking to make gold like this, you can see I have 4 billion gold and I actually got it pretty easily. But regardless, this is the way you need to make money if you're really wanting to upgrade your gear and stuff because it's by far the most efficient and best way to make money. You can literally come on here, create a listing and drop in a screenshot or whatever else or manually create the item here if you're on console and then click on it to sell and you'll get instant messages from people immediately saying, hey, this is my battle tag. And you'll get messages from people saying, hey, I'd like to buy this item. You can click reveal battle.net tag. It'll immediately drop them your battle net. You can immediately add them as a friend, sell the item to them, and you're good to go. I've actually sold quite a bit of stuff. And for instance, this triple GA mace, I listed for 3.5 billion. And as you can see, people are offering me 3.5 billion on the regular because this item is actually worth a lot more. Again, one item can change the game for you and make you never have to get gold again in Diablo. Make sure you check out one of these videos for more in-game tips or an awesome build. Like the video if you haven't already. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.